Hey everybody and welcome back. Uh, this is Patrick here. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the existing 3.js that we just built. Uh, taking a look at how it relates to Blender in regards to the coordinate system. Uh, getting, and then taking a look at uh, adding some shaders, uh, specifically Lambert shader along with some lights to uh, enhance our simple scene. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let's bring open our uh, existing scene okay you can see right here we have our our y-axis our x-axis and our z-axis and that's color-coded blue red green okay um, now if I open up blender real quick we'll take a look at that and you'll see this is my our basic scene all right you'll notice right off the rip that the axis are different on it so your z-axis is actually going up on blender your red axis is going to the right and the green is going over here. Now, the reason that is is because when they originally thought of this thing, they were thinking of it more like when you're staring at a screen, X should typically be pointing up like this, or Y should be pointing up like this, X should be pointing to the right. Uh, however, in most 3D modeling softwares, that's not normally how they think. They think that you're sitting down on a table and extruding from off of there. All right, so what we're basically going to be doing is creating a scene like this in Blender. Okay, now you'll notice that what we have is the y-axis going up and the x-axis coming to the right and the z-axis coming out. Uh, and these are all going to be sharing the same values that we just put into our scene right over here. Um, so from a workflow perspective, just bear in mind that your axes are going to shift when you are going from one software to another and just bear in mind what what direction those axes are and how they relate and that'll help you when you're kind of creating your 3d scenes um, and putting them together in order to get everything properly placed okay so without further ado let's take a look at adding some shaders and adding some lights and stuff to our scene All right, so I'm gonna come over here and open up our existing file all right, so the first thing we need to do is start changing some of the values. Uh, the, what I'm going to do right quick is change this background to gray. So we're going to need six Ds for gray on that. And then I'm going to add a grid into our scene. Actually, let's hold off on the grid for now. <clears throat> I'm going to add the grid right now, but I'm not going to actually enable it until uh, after we've finished doing everything else. So this is just basically a helper. So you can kind of visualize everything that you're seeing. So I'm going to add the grid helper function. And the first value that you put in there is going to be the size of the grid. And the second value you put in there is going to be the spacing on the grid lines. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a color to it. So var color equals new color make sure you get this right RGB 255 0 comma 0 and grid so again grid is our constructor what we're doing now is adding this color variable that we just created to that value. Of course, you can do it a different way if you want to. And then we will make the lines black right there and close that up. Again, I'm going to hold off on adding that for a second. But when, when I do add it, actually, I might just add it right here and we'll just comment it out for now. Scene dot add grid. All right, so that's in there right now, and we can just turn that on later. All right, so next we have to change these materials. These are basic materials right now. Okay, so the problem with basic materials is that they don't uh, they don't handle shadows, so we need to add a uh, non-basic material. So we're going to add that Lambert material, and this is just a flat shader essentially. 
So there's no specularity involved in this one. And we will turn off the wireframe. And this is our cube, so we will make it a nice pretty red shade. So let's enter a hex value for red. Okay, perfect. All right, so that just adds the cube to our scene. Uh, next, let's go ahead and move the cube up slightly. Okay, so right now it was going through the middle of the cube. Now we're just going to move it so that it sits on top of the plane that we created. And we're moving it up by half because everything went through the middle of it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So moving right along, um, we're going to have to mess with the plane. So let's go ahead and add a plane to our scene. So we're going to do var plane geometry equals new three plane geometry. And it's going to be a 30 by 30 plane with our grid at 50 by 50. So you'll be able to see everything. Nice and easy. All right, next we need to deal with the material of the plane. So let's add a material to it. Plane material equals new three dot mesh lambert material color zero x and then f f f f f f f six f's for white. All right. <clears throat> all right, so let's put it all together as our plane object. New three dot mesh. And then we'll add our geometry and the, and the surface of it. All right, perfect. All right, so next, remember how we were discussing the XY uh, stuff earlier? You'll notice if I open up the blender real quick. Okay. All right, so you'll see that right here on the scene that we're creating, um, the plane is actually rotated, and we're going to need to do the same thing. Because if you notice, if we were to open up for this copy of Blender right here, and we were to add a add a add a plane object to it, you'll see what it's done is it puts that plane object directly right there, which means that what we have to do, in fact, is rotate it in order to get it to be in the proper position. So which would be actually the X rotation on it. So if we want that X rotation 90 degrees, we're gonna to have to do the same thing over here. However, the difference is between Blender and 3.GIS is that if you notice we're doing in degrees right here and uh, 3.GIS doesn't hand deal with degrees, it deals with uh, Euler radians. So what we need to do in order to, to achieve the same result is we have to base everything off of uh, pi. So, or 2pi specifically. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to do plane dot rotation x. Okay, so this is going to shift around the rotation on it. And now we have to do it as a Euler value. Negative 0.5 times math dot pi. All right, so what that's going to do is it's going to rotate it uh, one quarter of one of a rotation, which would be 90 degrees if you think about it, if you do the math on it. So that, that should be pre, uh, placed properly now. All right, so what's next? All right, next we have to add a spotlight to it. So let's go ahead and do that, and we'll do that right below, right below our cube. So we'll do spar spotlight is equal to new three spotlight and then we will add a hex value to it and it's going to be ff ff 
then I'll add that color value. Spotlight dot cast shadow. All right, so you have to enable shadows on everything that you want to have shadows. So the spotlight needs to cast a shadow. Uh, the plane needs to receive a shadow and the cube needs to uh, cast a shadow as well. So let's go ahead and turn all that stuff on and finish up by putting the spotlight in place. Position, set, we'll do 15, 30, 50. Should put a nice location for that spotlight. And then let's just go ahead and add it to the scene. And we'll call that value, that variable. And that should add it to the scene. All right, perfect. All right, so we have the spotlight added to the scene. Next, we're going to go up, and we need to enable shadows on that cube. So let's go, we'll do that right below here. Cube.castShadow equals true. Okay, now let's do the same thing with the plane. Plane dot receive shadow equals true. And now finally the last thing you have to do is you gotta hop up to the render engine and you gotta turn on shadows up there. And we'll do that right below render. So our render constructor now needs to have shadows involved en enabled. So we'll do shadow map enabled is equal to true and then we'll do renderer dot shadow map soft is equal to true all right so that should be everything and we'll go ahead and hit save on that hit refresh and see if this works oh i clearly have a typo somewhere so let's take a look 20 line 25 what do we have Plain material. Where is that typo? Well, when in doubt, the easiest thing as opposed to looking through this whole thing, just copy and paste the correct one up here. And change this to FFF. Save, refresh. Still something wrong. Line 9. Shadow maps. Oh, misspelled it up there. And again, you know, some of the stuff is always troubleshooting. Little typos can really throw you for a loop. All right, there we go. And our plane is not, uh, we haven't added our plane to the scene, so let's turn that on. Scene, add, scene.add, plane. All right, let's try that again. All right, perfect. All right, so again, you can see this, this scene our y coordinate x coordinate z coordinate coming out that way and if we look at our our blender file you will notice that we have a very similar scene loaded up in the blender as well all right okay so that is it uh one last thing we can turn on our grid now take a look at that makes the axes a little difficult to see but it's nice for being able to visualize all this stuff and again, you will see that the grid lays out um, in the, <clears throat> the Z plane like it should. Okay, so that's it for today on this tutorial. Um, again, we'll be continuing to expand on some of these concepts uh, next week. Continue on, so uh, don't forget to subscribe. And thanks again.